Hi everyone! I feel so so electrified thinking about all of the books I picked up recently. After having to cut back on my spending last month, I went a little overboard this month to make up for it. Is my wallet ashamed of me? Perhaps. But do I regret it? Not at all. I am so delighted right now. I completed one of my most wished manga, I got some pre-orders from last year, I got a concept book from one of my favorite games, all of the good things. Without further ado, let's go! Up first, I picked up the Tears of Themis concept book. I absolutely love Tears of Themis. This is a visual novel. The main character is a lawyer, so the card battles are all debates, which is so fun. The plot and the cases are pretty interesting. A surprise to no one, but I also love romance and handsome fictional men. I play this game every single day and I have so much fun with it, so of course I needed to pick the concept book up. I'm contemplating uploading an in-depth look-through video of this book and all of its secrets. Up next for things that I actually read, I picked up volume 1 of the Case Files of Jeweler Richard novel by Suji Nanako and Yukihiro Utako. I have talked at length about the Case Files of Jeweler Richard manga. It's probably the best manga I've read this year. I adore it, so of course I needed to pick up the novel that started it all. Oh my goodness, this novel is absolutely exquisite. Everything that I love about the manga. The interesting cases, the life lessons, the relationships between different characters, the gemstones, they are all much more vibrant in the novel. In some ways, that's to be expected, right? This is the original after all. At first, I was a bit hesitant to start reading the novel right away. The manga is still very fresh in my mind, I even started watching the anime, so I was worried that starting the novel so soon would feel repetitive. I had nothing to worry about. The richness of this novel almost feels like a completely new experience. It's familiar because the cases are still familiar, but it's also completely new because of the greater attention to detail. I absolutely love it and I'm not bored at all. I could not put this book down at all. I fell in love with the story all over again, and I'm so glad I got to experience the story in three different ways. Each version offers something new, and I'm having a lot of fun with all of them. I think I'd like to make a proper recommendation video for this novel because I seriously do want more people to check it out. Fingers crossed that I can make that happen. Up next, I picked up Volume 7 of A Man and His Cat by Sakurai Umi. I love this manga very much. Every single chapter just feels like being wrapped in a warm blanket. I feel safe when I read this manga, which is such a precious feeling. I started reading this volume as soon as I got it, and wow, my troubles instantly melted away. I really wish I knew someone like Kanda. He is so sweet and good, his smile seriously makes everything better. I loved learning a bit more about his wife in this volume. He loves her so much. I can only dream of a love like that. I also really adore the new character featured in this volume, Jeffrey. He is so precious and I can actually relate a lot to him, so it felt especially nice seeing how he finally did something a little selfish for himself. It was so touching. Overall, this was another great volume. These always go by so quickly, and I always tell myself, okay, pace yourself this time, take it slowly, but then I'll just devour the entire book in one go anyway. I never do learn. I also loved reading about how Sakurai gushed over all of the live-action actors. I googled them and they actually are quite handsome. I do want to watch the drama adaptation too, but for the life of me, I can't get over the fake Fukumaru. It's a little freaky. So for now, the manga is more than enough. For more cat adventures, next I picked up volumes 23 and 24 of Natsume's Book of Friends by Midorikawa Yuki. With that, now I'm only missing volume 26 and I'll finally be caught up with the manga. I can't believe I'm only one volume away. I've mentioned this before, but one of the reasons why I slowly picked up Natsuma's Book of Friends is that I really didn't want this collecting experience to end, if that makes any sense. I wanted to keep buying a volume every month forever. On the flip side, it's also nice to cross off a goal from my list and hopefully I can do that next month. I'm actually still a few volumes behind in terms of reading, 
But Natsume's Book of Friends is a series I prefer to read slowly anyway. A chapter or two a day, whenever I'm in the mood, is the perfect dose of healing for me. Up next, the highlight of both this haul and my life, I picked up all of the remaining volumes of Barakamon by Yoshino Satsuki. I just need a moment right now. Alongside Natsume's Book of Friends, Barakamon is my favorite anime ever. When I watched it back in 2014, it completely rocked my world. I laughed so hard, I had so much fun, I got emotional, but above all else, I was really comforted. This anime meant a lot to me, and volume 1 of Barakamon was actually one of the first volumes of manga I bought for myself when I got a job. This series has been there for me for many moments in my life. Even though I do make videos about manga, there have been many periods in my life where I couldn't buy manga for one reason or another. And Barakamon was one of those series that kind of fell through the cracks. By the time I started collecting manga again in 2020, some volumes had already started going out of print, and I was genuinely devastated that I wouldn't ever be able to complete it at a decent price. I was beyond elated when I found out that Yen Press would reprint the series. Even though I normally prefer collecting in small increments, like I did with Natsume's Book of Friends, this time around, I knew I couldn't miss my chance again. So, as you can see, I picked up all of the volumes I was missing. When I received my order, I immediately put the volumes on my shelf just to see the whole series together, finally. That same night, I started reading from volume 1. I laughed, I smiled, I cried a little bit because I'm that kind of person. It was awesome. Since first watching the anime, I have regularly rewatched it a couple times already, but the series never gets old for me. It kind of blows my mind that when I started Barakamon over 8 years ago, I was a bit younger than Handa, and even I thought he was kind of a loser adult. But now, I'm older than he was, and I'm that stuffy adult who could probably also benefit from a countryside retreat where I rediscover the meaning of having fun and enjoying life. The passage of time is just… wild. There are over a hundred chapters in this manga, and I am so excited to slowly make my way through it. Now, there's no rush. I'm repeating my Natsume approach and slowly reading a chapter or so whenever I'm in the mood. Slice of life is best enjoyed slowly after all. Next, I picked up the Honey Lemon Soda Side Stories collection by Murata Mayu. It's been a while since I picked up a new Honey Lemon Soda volume, so it's been a while since I talked about it here. But oh my goodness, I am still so excited about the license announcement. I think about it every single day, and the thought of being able to read it in English just makes me so happy. If you've been here for a while, you know that I've been collecting it in the original Japanese. Because my language skills are not where they used to be, it's been a struggle to get through these volumes. I love this manga so much. It's just a great, feel-good high school romance. I love the main couple so much. Uka's character growth is awe-inspiring. She is the best. I can't wait for all of my romance-loving friends to pick this up so we can gush about it together. Up next, I picked up another favorite of mine, Volume 5 of My Love Mix-Up by Hinekure Wataru and Aruko. While not that long in reality, the wait between Volumes 4 and 5 felt endless. I'm so happy to have a new volume in my hands. I absolutely love this cover. I adore Hashimoto. As for this volume, Aoki is so endearing. I thought it was very cute how he wanted to stay on the science track because of peer pressure. Been there, done that, and regret it. But I am definitely rooting for Aoki and his endeavors. I was so sad because of something that happened in this volume. Well, I was really sad when I saw this scene in the live action, so reading about it in the manga this time somehow doubled my sadness. Why must we live in a homophobic, prejudiced world? It's not right. But Aoki's friends' reactions were so important to me. I'm so glad they took action and it was all addressed relatively quickly. I love them. I love them so much. They're so wonderful. Another thing that I loved about this volume was how Aoki and Ida promised to communicate properly and are gradually approaching the same wavelength. They are such a cute pair. 
I especially liked seeing all of Ida's reactions at the end. I would love to see him express his feelings more often. I also seriously admire Hashimoto's resilience. I don't think I'd be able to chase after someone like Aida for this long, so kudos to her. Overall, I loved this volume as per usual. I think it ended on a fun note too, and I'm eagerly awaiting volume 6. Next, I grabbed volume 5 of Black or White by Sachima. This volume actually surprised me quite a bit. I loved seeing Shin and Shige actually talk things out in the beginning. That was such a breath of fresh air, and I'm glad they're finally completely on the same page. I loved seeing Shige actually putting effort into changing himself and how he approaches his work. Pretty much everything I've been missing recently attacked me with full force in this volume. There was so much love, so much sex, so much character growth. All of the payoff I've been waiting for. It was amazing. When I first started this manga, I absolutely loved it. It was a 9 out of 10, but that love kind of waned in the past couple volumes. It went from a 9 to maybe a 7, but now we're back at that solid 9. This volume was that delightful. I am just weak for the classic amusement park date, and it was so fun seeing how actors could have fun in public. One of the things that I really enjoy about this manga is how the main couple is surrounded by so many good people who love them, and that was even more apparent in this volume. Again, it was just all great. I'm extremely excited to see what'll happen in volume 6, and I'm glad I stayed up to date with this manga. I actually still haven't reread volumes 1 through 4, but I'll try doing that soon. Up next, I picked up volume 2 of My Summer Review by Furia Nagisa. You know what's nuts? I pre-ordered this volume last year on Right Step and only just now got it. Even though I'm a fairly unlucky person, I've been pretty lucky when it comes to manga, so I think this was the longest I ever had to wait for an order to come in. It just makes me laugh now. I genuinely thought my eyes were deceiving me when I saw this cover because I thought Volume 1's cover looked exactly like this. I was so confused, so I rushed to find it and compared the two covers. They just happened to have the same setting. I thought I was going crazy. I remember really enjoying Volume 1, but because it's been a while since I read it, I reread it first before diving into the sequel, and it was just as amazing as I remember. In Volume 1, they were in high school, and in 2, they're in college. I love a good time skip. I also thought it was so fitting for Wataru to work in a movie theater. Isn't that just the perfect job for him? I also, in general, like stories about established couples and their routines. I love how this volume was drama-free, straightforward, and fluffy, and the image gallery at the end was so cool. Unfortunately, that's where my enjoyment ended. I thought Volume 1 was interesting and inventive. The movie pilgrimage was so memorable. Volume 2, though, was pretty basic and average. It didn't have that same intrigue that Volume 1 did. Wataru and Chiharu are still very sweet and they make a cute couple, but I thought this volume was pretty boring. It didn't add anything or enhance my love for the first volume. If I'm being critical, the sequel felt a little unnecessary. Aside from Wataru taking the initiative once to kiss first near the end, I didn't see any development in this volume. I mean, he did get jealous once, which was new for him, but that's it. Now, if I'm just being myself, my uncritical, just wanna have a good time self, I did enjoy this volume. Like I said, it was pretty sweet, but it just didn't do that much for me. So overall, this kind of falls in the middle. Usually when I feel like this about a manga, I'll try rereading it later to see if my thoughts change, and I'll definitely do that here. Up next, I picked up volume 1 of Shonen Note, Boy Soprano by Kamatani Yuki. I am a big fan of another manga of theirs, Our Dreams at Dusk. So when I found out that they had a new manga coming out in English, I was so, so excited. Shonen Note ticks off all of the boxes for me. A story about music and performing arts, about youth, it's emotional, it's sweet. This volume was so whimsical and charming like only Kamatani can be. Within the first few pages, I knew I wanted to protect Yitaka with my entire life. 
I love the exploration of sound in this manga as well, especially since he is someone who is quite sensitive to it. Sound as a way to appreciate and understand life around us was such a beautiful concept to explore. I wish I could listen to the sounds in this manga, but Kamatani has this beautiful ability to pull people in with their art. It's so surreal and captivating that even though I couldn't hear the choir, I could immediately feel how enchanting they sounded. Their art is just so marvelous. I love it so much. They truly create magic with every stroke and with every letter. I love the imagery and visual metaphors Kamatani created. Like the line about Yutaka's head being filled with sunny side up eggs. It was so memorable and vivid. And that's the beauty of a good story. It can transport you anywhere. This is a story written with so much love and care. It's a story about growing up, about day-to-day -day life in school, bleeding youth, all through the lens of a boy who truly embraces everything around him. I also loved the relationship between Yutaka and his mom and the various friendships that he's formed. Basically, I loved everything about this volume and I cannot wait to read more. I think I also want to check out more of Kamatani's manga. One that's on the top of my list right now is Hiraith, The End of the Journey. Up next, I picked up a manga I have been so excited to start. I got volume 1 of Skip and Loafer by Takamatsu Misaki. I thought the title and cover were both so stinking cute the first time I saw it and I knew I had to pick it up. Literally from chapter 1, my jaw dropped the entire time, but in a really funny way. Poor Mitsumi was having a day. It was just so funny. For example, I love how she carefully crafted her immaculate persona, but her friends and family back home immediately knew she got lost on her way. That first chapter was so good. It had all of the right beats and it hooked me right away. I fell in love. I had so much fun reading this volume. I loved the duckling metaphor all throughout. It was so cute. Mitsumi is also so precious. I love how she draws people into her orbit. I love how she's both so weird and so charming. I genuinely loved all of the characters who got introduced in this volume. Even the girl who I thought would be the classic bully wasn't even that bad. I think it's so cool how even in one volume, there were already so many layers to many of the principal characters. While they do have good qualities, they each also have some not as good qualities that they're working on. It was really refreshing to see. In short, none of these characters felt flat to me. Overall, this manga seems like a really solid coming of age slash comedy manga. I think there are 5 volumes out right now and I need to read more as soon as possible. Up next, I picked up volume 1 of A Sign of Affection by Morishita Su. This manga piqued my interest because of the male lead. I am also very interested in language learning and traveling, so I love meeting people or fictional characters like that as well. I also just think this manga has beautiful covers. I love how they form a rainbow gradient. That's just way too pretty. Almost immediately, I fell so hard for Yuki. She is so cute. She is the textbook definition of a cinnamon roll. So precious. I adore her. Did I mention she's so cute? I think love at first sight is such a tricky concept. It feels so naive, but at the same time, I couldn't help but root for Yuki. She's just a girl in love. I also thought it was interesting how the text color varied a little bit for dialogue that was lip read versus everything else. There are just so many ways to communicate with each other, whether that's by speaking or sign language or our involuntary reactions to a situation. And it was so cool to see all of that come together in this manga. The art in this manga is also so pretty. I couldn't help but fawn over each beautiful character. Judging from the afterword and the note in the middle of this volume, it's also very apparent that a lot of care went into making sure that Yuki's deafness was depicted with sensitivity. Surprisingly enough, the one part of this volume that didn't win me over was Itsuomi himself. I thought it was very cool when he listed all of the languages he knows, when he randomly went backpacking, or when he started learning sign language. But honestly, I didn't really feel any chemistry between him and Yuki. 
I don't feel captivated by him yet, but the author has definitely hinted at there being a lot more to his backstory, and I'm curious to see his character develop. I mean, this was just volume 1, so there's plenty of time to flesh him out. I think I was just a little bummed because I started this manga because of him and he didn't wow me right away. Regardless, I enjoyed this volume very much. I am so excited to see all the cute things Yuki will do next and how this relationship will progress. Next, I picked up Restart After Coming Back Home by Kokomi. This is another manga that I ordered last year that I only just received now. And this is easily one of the best volumes I have ever read. I love feisty, hot-headed characters like Mitsuomi. They are so cute, and when they're paired up with literal sunshine like Yamato, it's absolutely perfect. Yamato had me smiling from the get-go. I loved his backstory too. This volume kept me on the edge of my seat, but in a very gentle way. With every page, I felt so much anticipation for what would come next. How will these two move around each other? What will they do next? I felt so moved while I was reading as well. I love how the two main characters contrasted each other, almost like foils, but also how the differences in their personalities and mannerisms is exactly what the other person needed. It was just so perfect. This volume was so sweet, lovely, soft, a touch emotional, and more than a touch funny. It gave me the vibe of a relaxing day, which I thought was fitting because I read this on a relaxing Sunday afternoon. This manga also made me so hungry. I really want some onigiri right now. This one book packed so much into it. I loved Mitsuomi's character arc from being kind of immature and quick to anger, to thinking seriously in his own way about his future. I also loved the theme of homecoming. It was awesome. I am so glad I could finally read this manga, and I'm definitely picking up the sequel as soon as I can. Up next, I picked up The Two Lions by Furuya Nagisa. This is another manga I pre-ordered last year and only just received. It's kind of nuts that despite pre-ordering it, it wasn't until the third printing that I actually received my copy. The wait was tough for me. But I guess that just means this manga has been well-loved by a lot of people, which is always a great thing. The first thing that stood out to me was the quality of this book. It's amazing. All manga should be printed like this. And the price was good too. I gotta say, this story was also just so lovely. I really loved how easygoing it was. It was straightforward with no drama or stress. It almost brought me back to my own uni days and the daily shuffle that came out with hanging out with friends and whatnot. It was a very calm and very refreshing read. The character development and pacing was also just spot on. Leo and Junpei are both so cute. Leo in particular is incredibly endearing. I enjoyed his backstory, and especially with how everything came full circle at the end. He deserved that moment. I really love characters who want to restart and rebuild themselves. That takes so much courage and motivation and I'm always going to root for them. More so than a romance, this was definitely a coming of age story instead, which I adored. Basically, I love this manga. It hit all the right beats. Last but absolutely not least, one of my favorite reads this month, I picked up volume 1 of the manga adaptation of the other world's books depend on the bean counter by Iradori Kazuki, Wakatsu Yatsuki, and Ohashi Kika. This was on my radar for a couple reasons. One, the title sounded delightfully odd. Two, perhaps the most important, this hot dude on the right. Does anyone else just have a thing for handsome, mean-looking characters? They are a weakness of mine. And three, when I read the premise and found out this was Isekai BL, I was sold. I went into this manga with high expectations and it met all of them. It was so funny. When Kondo started talking about how odd jobs get pushed onto him and how he can't fight fatigue the way he did in his 20s, I was like, stop right there, sir. Stop exposing us old, tired people like that. This volume was such a page turner. I couldn't put it down at all. 
even right now as I'm talking about it, I desperately wish I had volume 2 in my hand so I could continue reading. I appreciated how level-headed Kondo was after entering this new world, and I really appreciated how interesting this world was. The world building in this volume was great. I also must commend the art, it is so beautiful. And the end of this volume literally made me blush and squeak. It was magnificent and hilarious. This story seriously has it all. Plagues, accounting errors, magic, handsome characters. All in all, I loved this volume so much. I loved all of the characters, I loved the story, I loved the art. I had such a good time reading and I need volume 2 as soon as possible. And with that very high note, we are at the end of yet another manga haul. I hope you had fun watching. Did anything in this haul catch your eye? Is there any manga you want me to check out next? I'm all ears. As always, I hope you're safe, happy, and healthy. I shall see you again soon.